this video we'll cover the steps to configure the radius feature on the AP8100, AP8000, and 800 access points. This video is not intended to address the radius protocol slash terminology and implementation on the network level. Proper radius configuration requires that the user have adequate understanding and experience of both the radius server and of general networking. Please contact your network administrator before attempting any configuration changes on your network. The three components in setting up RADIUS on the AP8800 and AP8100. The first one would be the RADIUS portion itself. This is where you're going to create your server profile. The second is going to be the wireless security. This is where you're going to tell the radio itself that the wireless security we're going to use is going to be radius. And then the VAP, this is where we're going to go into the specific VAP SSID and we're going to tell it that it's going to use the created security name and this created radius server profile name. First up is the radius server profile configuration. To get there, click on configure security radius. It's going to take you to the radius server profile. You can see a whole bunch of options over here. All right, so I'm going to go over these. The profile name, the profile name is the default profile name. You could change it. You could have one profile name by default. It is called default radius. The max retransmission. This represents the maximum number of times and authentication requests may be retransmitted to the configured radius server. The range is 0 to 3. By default, this is at 2 3. The message response time specifies the response time for the radius server to acknowledge a request. The range is for 3 to 9 seconds. By default, this is set to 3 seconds. The reauthentication period specifies the time period for the AP device to reauthenticate the client with the radius server. The reauthenticated period ranges from 900 to 65,535 seconds. By default, this period is set to zero. And then you have the entry status. This by default is set to enable. There's no way to disable this feature. Down here you have the rest of the settings. You have the primary authentication server. Go ahead and enter the IP address of your radius server. The server port, going to be 1812, the shared secret. That's going to have to match your radius server. And then your entry status, enable, disable, whichever one you're going to use. Then you have your secondary authentication server, if, if you're using one. Then you have your primary and secondary accounting. You do the same thing, IP address, the server port's going to be 1813, the shared secret. And then if you're going to enable it or disable it. Next up, we're going to create the wireless security configuration profiles. To get there, click on Configuration, Security, and Wireless Security. This is going to take us to the wireless security configuration page. Over here, you have the ability to create multiple security packages and different names and different types. All right. uh, by default, the profile name is AP Security. Uh, for radius, it's .1x. Now, the AP supports only one radius server, so you could name this whatever you want, but default is AP security, but you cannot have multiple radius servers. After you select .1x and you created your profile name, go ahead and click OK, and then click Edit. It's going to take us to this screen. Once again, you have your profile name, your authentication type. Now you have the encryption type. Now the encryption type is the way that the client card and the access point are going to communicate. It's not to do with the radius server. That's going to be totally different. This is just the way that the AP and the client card talk to each other on the authentication side. After you're done, go ahead and click OK and then back and then go ahead and click Commit. Lastly is assigning the security and radius profiles that we have created over here to our VAPs. To get there, click on Configure, Wireless, other interface one or two. Select the VAP that we're going to be using go ahead and click Edit. Now, as you can see, we have a security profile name and a radius profile name. If you have multiple ones, you'll have them in the pull down. For right now, this is what we've configured here. 
after you selected your security and radius profile names click OK and then commit once committed every change that we've made is going to take into effect now wireless clients are going to connect to the AP and then they're going to be authenticated via the radius server to learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim